Praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you. We thank you all for your supporting me. I appreciate your support. God bless you. I'm praying for you, and you pray for me. Now what we are about to go to the book of Revelation again. We need the book of Revelation because we are living the last days. So we're going to go to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7. And the coming of the Lord. What will the coming of the Lord be like? What will it be like? Are we seeing in the days of Noah and the things that take place? The water, it flood the earth, and so many died. Today, Jesus said he's not coming back with water, but with fire upon the earth. To burn up all the wicked and the wicked things. And it cleanses the earth. Let's go to the throne of grace, where we can find some grace to help in time of need. Are you sick today? Are you going through financially, spiritually, physically? Things seem so hard for doctor or for you to take. Are you grieving? Are you mourning? God can heal anything that you're going through. Any hurt, anything you're going through. The word of God is quick and living and powerful, able to heal you. So we come in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's go to the throne of grace because we can't do nothing. The Bible says everything with prayer and supplication. Let your requests be made known unto God and let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come boldly to you again in the name of Jesus, the great and mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We come to you, Lord, seeking your face, seeking your will, Seeking your mind, Lord Jesus. We seek healing for our land, Jesus. All our leaders have gone astray like a lost sheep. We are praying for them, Lord, that they might be saved, healed, and be delivered. Many of them are saved. Many know you in the part of the sin, God. We are praying for them too, Lord, that they might be strong and strengthened, God, because the days are evil, and we are living in the last days, Lord. Help them to watch and pray, God, and to look up, Lord, because of our redemption joy at night. We are praying for President and Vice president lord jesus we are praying for senator lord and every congressman and women we lift them up in prayer lord jesus we need them lord we need all our authorities we need our army our navy our military god we are praying for them those who are sick among them lord we are praying for them they are in active duty right now we are praying them too we are praying that the mighty god might keep them Strengthen them, uphold them, Lord, with the right and of your righteousness and give them strength. We need all our authorities. We need them, Lord. Bless them. Even our farmers, God, we are praying them to you right now. In the name of Jesus, we're praying for those who work, active doctors and nurses, God. We are praying them to you. We, we thank you for them, Lord. We thank you for our police force. We thank you for everyone. Oh, God, and those who are sick among us, Lord, those who are listening right now and sick in their body, we pray, God, for the mighty move of the Holy Spirit to touch them, be healed in the name of Jesus. We believe in the mighty power of the Holy Spirit to touch your body. Whatever you're going through right now, the heart surge is not too hard for God. In the name of Jesus, oh, God, is not final. Your sickness is not final. God says he's able to heal and restore you in the name of Jesus if you only believe that God is able Believe God with me now. Be healed in Jesus' name. God bless you and be healed. Be healed. Come on and praise him. The victory is in the praise. And today we're going to go to Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7. But let's go back a little bit up to verse 6. Verse 6. Jesus said, "From this, this, this is an introduction from Jesus Christ. Jesus is going to introduce himself now to John. John already know Jesus, but John was in the flesh. But Jesus, he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. What was in his spirit? What his spirit was like? He was praying. He was fasting. He, he was on his face before God. You know, because the position John was in at that time and, and the Isle of Patmos, he was left to die. After they, they tortured him so much with so many ways to kill him, he couldn't die because God had a plan for his life. When God had a plan for your life, there's nothing the devil can do to you. God watches over you. He predestined your life to serve him. So John was predestined for time like this, the end time. And John said he was in the Isle of Patmos, left to die 
We had a prisoner who was like him, left to die sometime, hunger and thirst for food and good water and good living. It was the way they treat prisoners at that time. But he was in the spirit, he was praying. No matter what you're going through, always pray and seek the Lord. No matter how you feel, no matter what you're going through. Just choose life, don't choose death. Just pray and seek the Lord. And then Dan, John was in the spirit. He said, and the Lord's day was on his face praying before God. And God, Jesus appeared to him. And, and he was scared. He said, he scared him away. After a while, John don't know whether or not he was in the spirit, in the flesh, or, or, or he, was, he was dead and go to heaven. He don't know. As he write. But he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And he heard a voice from heaven saying, John, I am he that was dead. I am the half grace to you. First of all, he greet John. Grace to you and peace from him who is, who is and was to come. He who is grace to you, John. That means here, John, you receive the unmerited favor of God. That's what grace means. Grace to you, John. Favor from God. You are highly favored, John. And I'm going to reveal myself to you, even though you know Jesus, but it's not the Jesus, but you know. You know Jesus in the flesh. But I'm going to reveal myself to you more. And he said, you know, I, he said, grace to you, who is and was to come from the seven spirits that are before the throne of God. That's Isaiah chapter 11. We said, talk about that last time. And I'm the first one from the dead. Jesus is the first one from the dead. Nobody come back from the dead but Jesus. He's alive. We're going to be like him one day. We shall see him like he is because we shall be like him in spirit. To him who loves us and frees us from, frees us from our sin by his blood. He, he loves us and per, we are purchased with the price of his blood, of the blood of Jesus Christ. And made us a kingdom of priests. When Jesus saved you and purchased you with his blood. We become a kingdom of priests. That means we used to go to the priest for healing, right? And when we sin, you know, some people still doing it today. When they sin, go make confession to the priest. And the priest would make sacrifice and offering for sin. Now Jesus is the great high priest right now in heaven. Sit on the right hand of the throne of God. And we are kingdom of priests. We are filled with this Holy Spirit. You see, the priests in those days were anointed by God. But today we are appointed by God. We got the Holy indwelling of the Holy Spirit. They were anointed with the Holy Spirit. But we have the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. We don't know what we have, the dynamite power in us. And he said, you know, we are purchased by his blood and made us a kingdom of priests. That means we are priests for God. We are called of God. Think about what the priests used to do. They used to offer sacrifice to God in prayer and supplication and healing. The people come to him for healing. We are priests today because we serve the high priest. So we are kingdom of priests. You see, the priests in the Old Testament days, they have a small... They are the high priests, and have the other priests under them. Well, the children of Aaron, the sons of Aaron are priests. But we are all priests today because we are called by the name of Jesus Christ. Not by Aaron, but by Jesus Christ. So he said, verse 7, Behold, I come with clouds, and every eye shall see him, even those who pierce him, and all the tribes of the earth shall mourn. Because of him, even so, amen. Yes, amen, so let it be. Because Jesus said it and it's amen. Whatever Jesus said today to you, John, is amen, so let it be. No one can take away from it and no one can add nothing to it. What I'm going to say to you today is amen. He said, behold, I'm coming with cloud. In Moses' day, Jesus came. But God came. With cloud to Moses. You can't look at me, Moses. I come with clouds. You can't look at God and live. 
So I come with clothes. And he said, I come with clothes even to you, John. Can you can look at me? One day you will be like me. You can see Jesus in the spirit now. But one day you shall see him as he is. Because we shall be like him. So we shall see him as he is. But now I come with clothes. And when, and when Jesus, 50 day, 40 days after Jesus' death, which we're going to a time now waiting for that, Jesus ascended up to heaven after 40 days. He walked the earth, he healed, he taught his disciple, and he went back to heaven after 40 days. He told them to come to Jerusalem and gather. And Jesus, right in, in the sight of his disciple, he went up to heaven. He ascended to heaven. And 10 days after he sent the Holy Spirit and the Pentecost. But while Jesus ascended into heaven, they wonder. And two men sitting in white said to them, the same way, the same place. You see, Jesus go up. He will come back the same way, the same place in the clouds. They said, behold, he come with clouds. Same way you see him go up, the same way. You're going to see him come. He even so let it be. Because Jesus said it and we believe it. Amen. So let it be. Verse 8. He said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Says the Lord God. Who is and was and is to come. The Almighty. John, fear not what I say to you today. I am the Alpha. The first and the last, the King of King, the Lord of Lord, the half and the amigo, the half of me, the first and the last, and the great one to come. There's none like him, there will be none like him, there's no God like him. In the beginning, God, and then stop right there, and he made the heaven and the earth. And it was void and dark, thick darkness was upon the hurt. And it was full with water, it was void. And he speak, and, and, and he speak and the, the water divided, the darkness separated from the light. And the light was called day and the darkness night. So he separ the water was separated. And, and he speaks to the word of find your place in the hurt. And the land appear. I'm Jesus. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the same God that formed the heaven and the earth. I'm the Father. I'm the Triune God. I'm the Father. I'm the Son. I'm the Holy Spirit. There's none like me. And the Alpha, I'm the Omega. And what I'm going to tell you, John, fear not. Write. Write them down. Write them on the scroll. You're on the Isle of Patmos. I prepare you for this time. And John, when it's time come to leave, you want to leave from here too. It's not in the word, that one. But John left from there after a while. God delivered him from Patmos. John was old now. After Jesus' death, all the disciples, they hung and they died in a brutal way. But John was left. And, and John was old. And don't think you are too old or too weak or, or, or you can't get above your bed or you can't get out of the chair that God can use you. He can heal you. He can use you. Wherever you are, even if you can make a sign language, God can use you. John wasn't looking for this. But John, Jesus said, fear not. Don't think you're too old. Don't think you're weak. Don't think you can't do what I tell you to do. I'm going to give you some divine instruction, John. I'm going to tell you what to say and what to do and what to write. I'm going to command you to write to the seven churches to warn them of the consequences because they're not living like they should. Some of them are weak. Some of them are striving. It's only one church. Philadelphia is in the revival. All the others, they're weak. They need to catch up on the things of God. They need to wash the garment white in my blood. They're not in place with God. Some are weak, some are sickly. But I'm going to tell you, I love the church. I purchased the church with my blood. And I'm going to send you to warn them, John. Fear not. He said, I am the half of the Omega, the Almighty, the beginning and the end. I am God. 
You know, this is the same word that God, that Jesus used from the cross. When Jesus said, Hello, Lama. I can't say it right. Elan, Lama, Shabbat, Tina. That means, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Now think about Jesus saying, my God, my God. It was in the flesh. So he was talking to God. For a while he lowered himself to come in the flesh, to be our infirmities, to purchase our sin. Our sin is purchased with blood. That's why we become a kingdom of priests. We are purchased with the price of the blood of Jesus Christ. So be careful. The Spirit of God lives in us. And if we don't do right, if we don't bear fruit, Jesus said to his disciples, some trees we need to cut down because they don't bear fruit no more. They are fruitless. We have to be careful with the power and the mighty power of the Holy Ghost. We are purchased with the price of the blood of Jesus Christ. To fear God and live. And, and it's, when Jesus write and said on the cross, these words, you know, he, he, he was giving up the ghost now. He was giving up the, the flesh, the human flesh. But here he comes, applied to John, and introducing himself. You know, the same word he speak from the cross. The same word he speak to John. What a mighty God we serve. You know, you know when Adam and Eve, when Adam and Eve sin, and bow to the devil, it's the soul out to the devil. Jesus need to purchase our salvation. And they're going to take blood what is not tainted. And there was none on earth that didn't taint it with sin. Because we come from Adam and Eve. He's going to take a innocent blood. The lamb that was slain from the garden of Eden before the foundation of the world. That, that redeemed Adam and Eve. That they didn't die in their sin. When they didn't obey God. So we were purchased with the price of the blood of Jesus Christ. So we be careful. We are children of God. We are kingdom of priests. That's what it is. We are purchased with the price of the blood of Jesus Christ. And here's the vision, vision of the Son of Man now. To John again. We are at verse 9. John, I'm a John, your brother and, and partner and partner in tribulation. John is saying, look, I, I, I'm not a big thing. I'm not a great thing. I'm your partner in tribulation. You know what? God, give me this thing to write. And the king and, and the kingdom and, and and the king and patience. I'm your and your partner and brethren in Christ. And then patience and endurance in Jesus Christ. Was I was I said I was on the Isle of Patmos. I was on the Isle of Patmos. And Jesus appeared to me on account of the Word of God, he said that you put me on the Isle of Patmos to die, to suffer and die. Because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They said I couldn't preach. And the Roman government was wicked. They tortured me many ways, but I couldn't die. He said, this old man, what should I do with her? Show him over the Isle of Patmos. He said, I was on the Isle of Patmos for the testimony of Jesus Christ. And, I, and I, verse 10. And I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And he said, I heard a voice from heaven. A loud voice that like a trumpet. And I was scared. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord shake it in the wilderness of Kedars. The voice of the Lord is great. It's like thunder. And I heard his thundering voice. Don't know whether I was in the high apartment anymore. I don't know whether I was in the flesh or the spirit or where was I. Where am I? I'm in the spirit. On the Lord's day. And I heard this audible voice from like a trumpet saying, Right, John. Right, be not scared. Right. I introduce myself. I'm the half and the omega. I'm the beginning and the head. And what you heard, right, John. Right, I prepare you for a moment like this. Right. 
what you see, write them in a book and send it to the seventh church, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Titera, to Sardis, to Philip, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Well, I'm going to tell you right to them. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the voice of the thunder. And don't be afraid to write and give it to them. Give it to the leaders of the church. The angel of the church. There might be angel over the church. But give it to the leader. Give it to the personal person. But can read it to the church. And he said, what you see, just write it. Just, obey, just be in obedience. Then I turned to see the voice that speaking to me. And turning, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in it, in the midst of it, the lampstand, one like the Son of Man, clothed in a long robe. With a long robe and with a golden slash around his chest. His hair was of his head was white. White like a wool, like a snow. And his eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnt bronze, burning a furnace. And his voice was like the roar of the many water, many thunder. Oh, my God. John couldn't move now. You can't run, John. They were nowhere to hide because it was in the spirit. And it's like John, God said, be still and know that I am God. And what I'm going to tell you, you got to have to learn to listen and write. You can't move, you can't run, you can't hide. You hear the voice like a thunder, but I command you to listen. Can't go nowhere. But, but God appeared to him and said, I'm God. I'm Jesus. I'm Jesus who you used to know, but I'm not like the same. His hair was like snow, white like you never seen, like no full of soap could clean. And his eyes like a flame of fire, and his voice like many thunder, shake you up to pieces. But you still sit there, and your face. John don't know where he was. He was in the spirit, but he don't know if he was in the high of Patmos, or he was in heaven, or where he was. He was in the spirit. God took away his movement and everything else. He's hardly thinking right now. When God's speaking, can nothing else interfere? It's God time with you. If you're in a vision or a dream and God is speaking to you, he let you be still and know that I am God. And you got to listen. So John said, Describe his robe, long right robe, white. You know, spotless lamb of God. And and it is golden slash around his waist. The high priest, dressed like the great high priest. He's our great high priest, has come to his clothing. He was a great high priest, long robe with golden slash around his chest. His ears and his head was white like snow. Like a wool. His eyes were like a flame of fire. Oh my God. His feet were like burnished brass. Because it's from everlasting to everlasting. The burnished brass is from everlasting to everlasting. It's been a long time. Many, 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 many thousands and thousands. And we don't know how old. But he is from everlasting to everlasting. So his hair is going to be white. When you get all your hair get white. But this one like a snow. Like a glistening snow. Nothing to compare to it. And his feet. Big and strong. And then it's high like a flame of fire, the penetrating highs that is in every place, the highs of the Lord, which is in every place, seeing the good and the evil. He penetrates sin 
He penetrated the darkness. The darkness and the light are both alike to God. Those penetrating eyes, flame of fire, see through your old body, see through every place, penetrate everywhere, every darkness, every light, everything. He sees what we're doing. He hears when we pray. He hears when we hum a song. He knows the movement in our body when we hum in a song. He knows everything. He knows all about you. He knows the hairs on your head. He knows every ounce of blood in your body. He knows every bone. He knows all about it. Jesus knows all about our struggles. Everything. He knows us. And he said, Jen, I know what you're going through here. I know what you're feeling. But right now you're in the spirit. And you can't go nowhere. You can't move until I say so. Okay. And his hands. And in his right hand are seven stars. In his right hand, seven stars. The seven churches in Asia Minor. And the seven stars. That's how God sees us. God sees the people of God like a shining star. He don't see us like we see ourselves. And we don't love ourselves and we don't love Jesus and we don't love one another. Jesus loved the church. And purchased the church with his blood. And make us a kingdom of priests. A royal priesthood we are. A peculiar people. A called out body. Washing the blood of Jesus. That's why we have become a kingdom of priests. We don't sin like we used to sin and talk like we used to talk. We should be growing in grace, in love, in knowledge of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ daily. When you read the word. When you read the infallible word of God. In this red writing here, whether it's red or whatever color. We should be growing in grace, in love, in knowledge, in love. We, are we growing daily? That's why I'm going to send you to the church, John. I'm going to send you to the church to write to the church. I'm going to send you to write to the church, John. Because they're not growing. Some of them not growing. Only one is in revival from the seven church. What are we doing today? Are we growing in grace? Are we growing to the image of God? Are we ready to meet the Lord when he comes? Is there a readiness in us to meet the Lord? Are we watching and waiting and looking above to see when the trump of God shall sound? Some of us are called by the name of Jesus Christ. But your garment is not spotless. Your garment is dirty. Your garment is not white. Some of your pastors are praying church. I listen to many sermons. And some of you are playing church. You are playing with the word of God. It's time to repent. This is a call to repentance. That we should humble ourselves and pray. God will heal us and heal our land. Heal us, our body physically, spiritually. Whatever healing we need and heal our land. Our land we need to turn. America we need to turn to God. Church is playing churches. We need to turn to God. It's time to pray, to fast, and to seek the face of the Lord, and to turn back to God. When Daniel was fasting, are we reading Daniel chapter 7, and chapter 8, and chapter 9? Daniel was fasting, and praying, and seeking the Lord. He not only fast, vegetable fast. He said he fast in sackcloth and ash until he fainted. Some days he fainted. He fainted until the angel Gabriel had to come and anoint him, because he couldn't understand the word you couldn't understand the things what is in the revelation what the, the the time ahead what God tell him about revelation the thing going to come to pass and see things in his days and things the end time as we getting into that some things that Daniel seen his vision he said Lord I don't understand and I'm fasting I read it in Jeremiah and, and in, in, in book of Jeremiah Jeremiah write some things here Jeremiah hate Jeremiah 29, uh, Jeremiah 29 and 10. I see something about 70 weeks, which is 70, 70 weeks, 70 years. And when, when the children of Israel will be delivered from Babylon, it's 70 weeks. And, but the, the rest of the 70 weeks, I don't understand it. And since I don't understand it, 
I'm seeking the face of the Lord because I don't know whether or not today or tomorrow is going to be. So when he started to seek the Lord, the angel come and declare, he said, Dan, he said, um, in, in chapter 9, and he said, um, Daniel, you're well beloved of God. You're highly favored. But these things you see here, you need to write them in a book. That whosoever come in the coming years to come, many years to come, somebody might interpret them and see what I was saying about the end times. And they will read it and they will tell it, go tell it like I tell John to write. So there are things in the scripture we might not understand right away like Daniel. But if we seek the Lord, he sent his angel to Daniel and said, Daniel, you are highly favored. What do God think about us today? We see what God is going to say to the churches. We, we don't get down to the churches yet, but the churches at Ephesus have lost their first love completely. They, 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 are, they, they, they are wandered away from God. Like the songwriter said, I've wandered afar from my Savior. As vile as a sinner could be. As vile. But I wonder if Christ, my Redeemer, could save such a sinner like me. As he could save such a backslider like me. You might be backsliding. You might be wandering from God. You might be going back to your whole ways. When God made you, <coughs> washed you, and purchased you with his blood, and you've gone back, a disobedient child, a prodigal child heating from the pig pen. Today you can come back and heat at the table of God. He said, come back now. Come home. Come home. It's time. It's too late to midnight. It's time to come home. The midnight cry is going to come soon. And maybe in your life, it's going to come tonight, tomorrow, and soon. We know soon and very soon we are going to see the king. But to, today, some people, somebody I'm speaking to, your life is required soon and very soon. It's time to turn back to God. You don't want to be lost. You don't want to be in a place of torment forever and ever. Jesus loves you so much. And you are purchased with his blood. He said to the disciples, these fig trees for a year, they've been planted and they never grow. I'm going to cut them down. But the intercessor, the husband man said, leave it for another year, Lord, and I will manure it. I will cherish it for another year. But Jesus said, no, is the accepted time. No, is the day of salvation. Tomorrow is promised to no one. This is the day of salvation. Come home, prodigal. Come home. Come out the pig pen and come home to God and get your garment washed in the blood of the Lamb again. God is so merciful. He's so faithful. Though he's so high, though he's so great, though he's so awesome, the voice of thunder, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, who speak the hurt into existence, the same God humble himself and call him, come home, come home, loved one, come home, backslider, come home, homosexual, come home, lesbian, come home. He's stretching out his arms. But soon the time of probation will be over and you will not hear the voice of God anymore. He's knocking now. He's standing at the door and he's knocking on your heart. Come now. Let's get it over with before it's too late. Can I pray with you right now? Are you able to pray with me? Lord Jesus, I'm a backslider. I'm a messed up Lord. I do things that I'm not supposed to do. And you spare my life until this moment. Have mercy upon me, Lord. Wash me again. Cleanse me again, Lord. Jesus, I write my name in the long book of life. Take not my name from the book of life, but write my name in the long book of life. That I might be saved. I want to be saved, God, from this awful judgment and this awful hell. Come into my heart, Lord. Wash me, cleanse me from all unrighteousness and let me to know that I have eternal life. And if you get that, you can go find yourself a church that preaches Jesus and him crucified. That, that love Jesus. And you will know when you start to read the book of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read John first before you go to the others. 
Because there's a man there like, like, named Nicodemus in John chapter 3. He heard about Jesus. He heard his preaching and his baptism and all of those things what Jesus had done. And he come by night because he was so rich. He, he didn't want to be among the poor. He come to Jesus by night and said, Lord, teacher, the thing that you teach, nobody else teach it. Nobody else can teach it. What shall I do to have eternal life? Jesus said, you must be born again. He said, how could I enter into my mother's womb again and be born? I'm a, I'm a big man. He said, Jesus said, you have to be washed in the blood. Ask him to come into your heart and change that heart of stone and give your heart of flesh. And when you have changed, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The whole thing he used to do is passed away and you're a new creature in Christ. And if you just ask Jesus to come into your heart and start reading the book of John, then you know that you have eternal life. If you have to make a turn, you can't go back to your old sin because it might be just too late. God bless you. And one day, I'm, I know I'm going to see you in heaven one day. I'm going to know you better. God bless you. Have a nice day. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Carter.